All right, once again, I know you may be getting sick of him by now, but Jeff Johnstone from JBO, so he was he was good enough to hang out with us uh, and spend almost a, a more than an hour actually talking about the state of the sport. If you haven't seen it yet, you'll go to justin.tv slash onthewateranarchy and check out the full 68-minute uh, uh, show we did. Thank you for doing that, Jeff. Sure, um, pleasure. We're here today to talk to you about... Um, the boat that uh, that you released a picture to us the other day uh, of the the new J111, which doesn't look like a J boat. Tell me about it. Well, I, I, I'm not sure if that's a compliment or not, but uh, we uh, uh, every new boat we work on, we like to give it a new look. And and I think uh, you know when the 122 came out, it certainly had a new look. The uh, 97 does, and with uh, the 111, really the, the whole idea was to uh, get back to basics. And we really like uh, we grew up as performance sailors. We really like boats that sail well. And uh, so it was time for us to create a boat that had as much boat speed as we could muster for the budget. You know, really, a really good uh, sailing performance value, much like uh, in its day, maybe the, you consider the J35. Um, and uh, now it's not so much about all the options you add. People just want a really good, easy to sail, fast boat, and maybe add the creature comforts later. And for 111, we wanted to get standing headroom. We wanted to have um, a really nice performing sprit boat and uh, something you could do single or double handed as well. So we're, we're psyched. Well, what's going to be different about this boat than a, a J109 compared to the 109? Because that's a very similar size boat that I've sailed on quite a bit. Um, what, the 111 is going to be lighter, the 111 is going to have bigger rig, what? Uh, it's about the same size rig as a 109 and a similar weight as a 105. So the horsepower numbers go way up. Um, the 109 um, does so well as uh, it adds that cruising component, uh, and owners truly do use the boat for cruising. It's a true dual-purpose boat. Uh, the 111 is going to be more dialed up on the performance side. It'll have the weekending capabilities with the headroom, uh, but it's more of an open layout, less of a liveaboard cruising layout. So um, if you're going to race cruise, uh, 109 is great. Um, if you're primarily racing day sailing, occasional overnight, then the 111 will be suited. So they're, they're actually very differentiated. And it's got enough headroom for both of us, six, you're 6'3", six, what? Six, I'm 6'2", six, so I need to get up to uh, basically a 40-footer before I can stand up, at least yeah, one of I our 40-footers. I have the same problem too, I have scars all over the top of my head, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so okay, so we have a, 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 a more of a more of a racing oriented for the, for the 111. What about pricing? Pricing, uh, good question, we're right in the middle of it now, in fact uh, half our time here at the boat show has been sitting with yeah, you know, our, our favorite suppliers and uh, and going through the winch packages and the hardware and the rigs and and so it, it'll be out shortly. I mean, that's that's a question in everyone's mind, but uh, it'll be a, a a lot of speed for the dollar. Yeah. Well, that's good. It's good to see. I know you know as I've told you in the past, uh, two of our favorite boats on SA are, are the J90, which is really like you know it's just one of those. Kind of reminds me of uh, of some of the cars I used to lust after, where they only built ten or twenty of them, you know, uh, that were really powered up. And the '90 was one of those, and it's a spectacular 125, also a great boat. Right. right. Um, but it's good to see you get back to some of that ethos, and hopefully, uh, they'll be they'll be viable enough for you to, to build more boats like that. That's what um, we that's what we like. Thank you uh, very much. We we do too. <laughs> yeah. um, and and I you know that's it. You, you and, and we're gonna go go to your racing a little bit here. Uh, switch gears on you, and and um, I really just. I haven't talked to, 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 to any of the witnesses yet, but I'm just learning about this accident uh, that we covered three months ago, maybe, at the J80 Worlds in Santander, Spain. Mm. Um, and apparently you were, you were actually there uh, right next to Jay Lutz when he was, uh, when he had, uh, was crashed into it by a, a powerboat. Can you just explain what you saw? I know you, know, you guys were not, you, you know, you, they were behind the sail, whatever. Just explain what you saw. Well, I was, I was looking at the telltales. I was driving the boat, but basically it was... Um, yeah, it was really unfortunate. There's uh, 132 boats out milling around before the starting line, uh, about 10 minutes before the practice race, and um, and Jay and ourselves uh, finally lined up. We were uh, lured, and he was on the on our weather hip, and we were just finally going up when to uh, uh, check out height, speed, uh, you know, higher, slower, faster, you know, all that stuff. And the uh, we got going into it, and. Um, and a rib, uh, I'm not sure the purpose, the rib was uh, either a press rib or a race committee, um, uh, came across our bow at pretty high speed, planing speed, and obviously never saw um, Jay hug, hug back on her hip, and, um, and came across our bow, and then uh, all of a sudden we heard a bunch of screaming, and all of a sudden, oh, you know, everyone kind of went into shock. There's a collision between the two boats. We circled around, uh, one of the guys, uh, their guys was in the water, it uh, looked like everyone was moving on board, um, but again, the sea conditions were um, 
pretty rough. It was, it was wavy, it was windy, and uh, the toughest thing was trying to extract the two boats. Um, was Jay actually pinned underneath the rib? Looked like he was down in the cockpit. I, I think afterwards he, he was, uh, was he, he was uh, pinned, um, but uh, he was removed and got onto another yeah. rib, and they eventually towed the whole thing in with the... Uh, the rib still on top of the rib at 90 degrees to the to the 80. Oh, um, the uh, the damage to the boats was uh, you know, there was definitely a, a lot of damage to the 80 because he had a rib landing on top of it. The rib didn't appear to be damaged, but it's just it was a freak accident, and it was um, um, you know it was a real tough way to start out a world. So yeah. uh, high expectations, and uh, uh, they were uh, Jay and the crew hung around for three or four days and when he was mobilized enough to be able to uh, fly back he did um, but the a uh, lot of teams came by the hotel and and greeted him and and um, and it was um, you know pulling together a lot of the teams who, uh, who felt felt badly about it but All I right, hear well, he's coming back and we're gonna see him in a he few was weeks last weekend you're yeah. doing North Americans we're here doing North, yeah I'm going down to that it's gonna be a, a right. great reunion in Texas well keep an eye out for news from North Americans also keep an eye out this week for a feature on this accident and what's happened in the interim. Je uh, Jeff, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, uh, it's been great to hang out with you. Thank you for all your help this week. Yeah, thanks. It's been all fun. Right, yep.